Uh, yes, I will talk about uh, testing critical deep learning applications. So let's start uh, with a general introduction. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the classical software stack that is called Software 1.0, that is written in programming languages by using explicit instructions to restrict the behavior of your program. In contrast, Software 2.0 can be written in a much more human unfriendly language, such as the weights of a neural network. Uh, for software 2.0, we have to specify somehow the behavior of the desirable program. Which this can be given uh, as to satisfy a data set of input-output pairs of examples. And we will use a rough skeleton of code, such as a neural net architecture, to identify the subset of the program space. And we will use computational resources to search the program space for that uh, exact program that works as we want it. And then this will result our software 2.0 solution. Neural networks uh, uses a, restrict the search space to a continuous subset of the program space, and they provide, uh, they provide an efficient means for this search uh, by using the so-called backpropagation and stochastic gradient descent. So a short introduction of deep neural networks. There are neurons, they are connected uh, to each other and each connection has a weight and the neurons are organized into layers such as the input layer. There are hidden layers, layers uh, in deep networks, there are many, many hidden layers, and the output layer will provide the output. And we can give, for example, uh, pictures to our deep neural network. We can use black magic, so-called black magic that is gradient descent, to do something inside the deep neural network to set the edges and the connections and the weights. And then finally, this neural network will learn uh, to recognize cats. And actually, this black magic that works inside uh, the teaching procedure is called gradient descent that is very, very efficient. And for certain classification tasks, actually, deep neural networks are superior even uh, compared to humans. However, there are huge challenges. So when we want to develop a machine learning product that consists of two main tasks. At first, we need some algorithms and models, and then we need a huge, huge data set, so we need data engineers. And we need this data set for teaching and also for testing. There is also a huge challenge uh, regarding uh, machine learning that is debugging. So we need interpretability and explainability, and we might uh, choose between uh, using a 90% accurate model we understand, or we might choose a 99% accurate model that we do not understand. And uh, there is also problems, uh, other kind of problems such as faults and attacks. So we have to consider fault tolerance and defenses against attacks. And what is the main goal of this talk is safety and a little bit security. So just to emphasize how important problem is this, I just uh, wrote some headlines. Uh, the 10 biggest AI failures, such as uh, self-driving car accidents or face ID hacks. Uh, or the top 10 people killed by autonomous robots, or you might all heard about the Uber accident. But there are also problems in commercial uh, artificial intelligence-based systems, such as the famous Tesla accident that is depicted in this picture and resulted this. Uh, but there are many, many other accidents that are not in the news, such as this one uh, where the Tesla autopilot just hit a track. So uh, it is very important to analyze these systems and it is very important to do it at design time. For this purpose, uh, a definition will help us. Uh, 
Uh, a pair of inputs x and x prime is called an adversarial example for a classifier. If a reasonable person would say uh, that they are of the same class, but the classifier produces significantly different outputs. The famous example uh, introduced by Segedi et al. Uh, for an industrial strength neural network uh, is depicted in this picture. So here we can see a panda. I'm sure that everybody can recognize that this is a panda. A neural network uh, was also quite sure in this. And we can also add some white noise to this panda. Actually, this is depicted in this picture. This uh, actually recognizes a nematode uh, with 8% confidence by this, the same neural network. Actually, here is a nematode. They are, I think, quite different. But adding this white noise to this panda picture will make the neural network uh, be quite sure that this is a gibbon. I'm sure that none of you think that agrees with this neural network. So, but there are other kind of examples. So, for example, here you can see a picture of an ostrich, and uh, here in the left side you can see methods to generate uh, these images. Actually, there are small perturbations in these images. And the neural network will say that it is a beaver, or a cradle, or a reel, or safe. So the adversarial, adversarial examples are visually indistinguishable for us, but they are visual illusions for the neural networks. So I'm quite sure that they are different, and actually uh, the neural network will say that in these pictures there is an armadillo. So, there are other kind of problems. Here you can see on the top, um, actually I would call it white noise, but it is recognized as a cheetah or a peacock by a neural network. Or you can see in the bottom that there are some patterns, and they are recognized as a starfish or remote controller uh, by uh, neural network. Because the neural network learned the discriminative features of a starfish and the colors, and it can recognize these patterns in that picture. But uh, even though these patterns are on that picture, it is definitely not a starfish. But there are also other kind of adversarial examples, physical adversarial examples. Here you can see a Turtle. This is a 3D printed turtle that was just, with just uh, the researchers just, just take some photos of it. And uh, randomly sampled poses of this 3D printed turtle uh, are classified by a neural net as a riffle at every viewpoint. So certainly there are many, many problems with deep neural networks. And here you can see a video we wanted to detect stop sign, but as you could see, we applied patches, or researchers applied patches in this picture, and the neural net at the camera had to go very close to that stop sign to detect it. So there are also adversarial examples in the physical world. So it is very important to ensure the correctness of these deep neural network-based solutions. We might use various analysis techniques, such, such as model checking. Model checking works as follows. There is a real-life system. We create a formal model, and we formalize the property. And then by giving this, uh, all these things to a verification engine, it will prove uh, these properties of our system. However, it is a very interesting question, that how can we formalize the working of AI? How can we formalize the properties? And what kind of algorithms to use for this purpose? And researchers uh, developed a tool for uh, the verification of deep neural network-based controllers. Uh, these controllers are used uh, in such places like uh, in airplanes for accident avoidance. And in this case, the specification is given as a set of points and ex expected output, uh, as shown in this picture. And uh, efficient uh, solver-based algorithms can prove properties of uh, neural networks used for this purpose. 
We can also verify the robustness of such systems. So for example, for if we want to uh, be the detection not sensitive to lightness, in this case, if we change the lightness of this picture, we want the neural net to classify it uh, similarly. Or we want to make the detection to be not sensitive uh, to rotations, such as in this picture, we have a small rotation. We don't want to uh, fail uh, the neural network. And advanced algorithms were introduced to analyze these robustness properties. I'm sure that many of you have already heard about abstract interpretation. This was also introduced for deep neural network by researchers in Switzerland. And uh, the main topic of this talk is testing. So we can use white or gray box testing based on fuzzing. Uh, researchers at Google introduced the so-called coverage-guided fuzzing technique to find numerical errors in trained neural networks and to find errors in a deep neural network optimization. It works as follows. We have valid neural network inputs. We choose one from them. And then we apply, uh, the algorithm applies some uh, mutation. It can be white noise or user defin defined mutations. And then we give this input to the deep neural network and we can observe if it crashes or otherwise we can analyze the coverage. Uh, we can measure the coverage by looking at the activations of the computation graph and then we can choose another input uh, for the deep neural network. Uh, we can also use symbolic execution for this purpose. Here you can see the workflow of the concolic testing approach introduced by researchers from Oxford uh, using symbolic execution. So we have a seed, we execute the deep neural network that refers to the concrete execution and then uh, by using the output uh, we can feed it to a symbolic execution engine that will search for new outputs uh, according to the results of the concrete execution. And then this loop will go around until a coverage uh, is reached, uh, until a coverage metric is satisfied. So researchers developed various coverage metrics uh, traditionally known from the software industry and also uh, uh, from the deep neural network community. So these, this technique can be used to find vulnerabilities in deep neural networks. So here you can see an image with predicted label three. Uh, this technique can be used to find the top 5% um, of most important pixels highlighted in green or the top 10% important pixels. And it can be used to find one pixel attack that is highlighted in red. Changing this red pixel to black changes the predicted label to 8. I'm sure that only few can see that picture that is there. And this technique can find these kind of vulnerabilities. And we can also use black box testing techniques, uh, such as differential testing, that is implemented uh, by researchers uh, in this Deep Explore tool. Differential testing runs more versions of the same program, in our case, uh, deep neural networks, and it tries to generate tests to alter the output of the neural networks by applying domain-specific modifications and mutations. And its goal is also to increase the neural coverage of these neural networks. It works as follows. We have a picture, we give it to the Deep Explore tool, and we run the uh, neural networks, which are uh, developed by the automotive industry, and we compare the output. As you can see, they produce different output, uh, outputs, so this can be used, this picture can be used for a test case. But there are many cases when the neural networks will agree. In this case, we will synthesize an adversarial attack, a test case. How to do that? Uh, we will use mutations. These mutations are domain specific. So in this case, for example, we can uh, modify the lightning conditions and then uh, we will give it to the neural networks 
and compare the output, but they still agree. Then we can apply another mutation, such as dirt on the lens, and this will uh, modify the output of the neural networks. So this image with these different lightning conditions and dirt on the lens can be used as a test case in the future. So here you can see some pictures uh, of real examples. On the top you can see that the different uh, neural network implementations agreed, but by applying these domain-specific modif modifications, uh, the, the output is quite different. And um, actually the researchers continued their work uh, into the autom uh, automotive industry, and they introduced this deep test tool, which uh, applies metamorphic testing that uh, exploits the fact that the autonomous car steering angle shouldn't change significantly for the same image under any lightning weather conditions, blurring, or any affine transformations with some small parameter values. So by using deep test, they could add fog for example, to the pictures, and uh, they, ch they can just alter the output of the uh, autonomous car, or they can use uh, rain, and they can add it to the picture, and this will also uh, make the neural network fail. So, so far, uh, I introduced many, many analysis techniques for unit test deep neural networks. However, a machine learning system uh, are mainly uh, composed of more components and they consist a huge AI-based system such as an autonomous car or autonomous robots. So we need to ensure system level correctness, we need system level testing, robustness testing, and we need to find extreme cases. And at our university in BME, uh, in the last couple of years we introduced a system level testing uh, approach for AI applications. I will show it on a robot uh, example. Here you, can, here you can see the workflow. It is started by creating a domain model uh, which captures the information of the, informa uh, of the environment and it can also capture well-formedness constraint. Here you can see a small example of this robot model. There are uh, elements, objects, uh, and attributes of the elements, and connections, relations between them. And this will capture the information of the robotic system. We can use uh, specification languages to describe the missions. Uh, this way we can define the relevant situations and patterns of this system, and we can also define the mission goal of this robotic system, and we provided language support based on graph patterns and scenario languages. And then we can generate test cases uh, from these models by combining the patterns and the various situations and choosing extreme parameter values. We introduced uh, at our department, the Vietra DS set tool for model generation. Uh, it uses graph generation algorithms, logic solvers, and various meta heuristics to generate graphs. And it was introduced this year at the biggest conference on software engineering. And this context description can be used then to generate physical or simulator environments. And then this simulated environment can be uh, simulated in, the, in uh, such tools like the Gazebo simulator. And then we can evaluate test cases. For this evaluation purpose, we use the requirements defined in the specification languages. We generate monitors, actually test oracles from it. And then we can analyze the context patterns by using graph pattern matching and by evaluating the parameters of the objects. And we can also analyze the temporal behavior of these systems, and then we get the verification results. In the future, we plan to extend this approach to feed these results back and generate new tests according to these uh, results. And here you can see a small example, a tram example actually. The tram goes into a, a station, it uh, recognizes, it detects a car and a pedestrian, and then it continues it, its way, and it still detects the car, but because um, the pedestrian went behind a traffic sign, we do not uh, recognize it 
him uh, anymore. So, uh, in this talk, I overviewed the literature. It is very important to analyze and verify and test deep neural network and, in general, artificial intelligence-based solutions. There are various uh, formal verification and testing techniques for this purpose. I introduced our approach for system level testing of AI based systems and I showed a small example run of our tool. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, please let me know. Are there any questions? Because I cannot see any questions in the app. So, any questions from the audience? I guess, is there any? A new one? Okay. Can we pull it up? Okay. Okay, we can see it now, thank you. So, is there any research for standardizing the input mutations applied for the well-known domains where DNNs are used? Uh, not yet. Uh, there are different approaches. Uh, the standardization has already, I think, started, so there are some, uh, uh, some institutions where they started, but it is uh, in its uh, very early stage. Thank you. As I understood, even a small change, some noise can affect the correctness of classification of the NN. How to handle this? Remove noise or train or noisy images as well? Uh, well, you can use, yes, preprocessing techniques or you can uh, use uh, more ro robust training methods. So there are uh, training methods that uh, aim to uh, to provide robust systems, but even for those systems, you have to uh, use these robust robustness testing approaches because it is not 100% uh, uh, sure. So there are techniques for that. Thank you. How well picture recognition works on black and white pictures? Also, if we just alter some colors in the picture, will the AI recognize the objects just the same? Mm, well, uh, for colored pictures, uh, the situa situation is that not. Uh, even changing the colors can, uh, ch can change the output of the neural networks. Actually, uh, if you have a huge data set that covers many, many different uh, objects with many different colors, uh, then it will uh, learn that uh, may be your object uh, f from the detection point of view. The color of your object is not important, uh, but it is not a general thing. And for black and white pictures, it depends on how many black and white pictures you have. So it depends on the data set. You can use preprocessing also here. And there are also techniques that use uh, preprocessing pre techniques that uh, somehow mimic uh, what a white and black and white picture uh, does so uh, by transform, uh, transforming the colors or removing the colors. So there are techniques uh, for that. The questions are still coming, but I know we are out of time. So I think we, we can uh, answer, you can answer these questions later offline or in, or in email because there will be other things planned here on this stage. So please, uh, uh, thank you for this presentation and please enjoy your lunch. Thank you.